Hey everybody, Tactic Angel here, back on the PlayStation 4, talking about World of Warships Legends, and today we're going to start out a new series where we talk about an actual ship line. Uh, we're going to be looking at, first, the Royal Navy Destroyers. The Royal Navy Destroyer line is capped by this ship, HMS Lightning, and we're going to go through each of the ships up to the Lightning to see how you want to attack this and is it really worth the effort. First, let's talk a little bit about where the Royal Navy line is in general look and feel. Now, a lot of people will compare this to the American line or the Japanese line on sort of this continuum where on one side you have the Japanese Imperial Navy being really heavy on the torpedoes, and then on the other side you have the American ships, the very gun-oriented destroyers. And then actually a little bit off of the chart on the American side is probably the Puisca Vista, but never mind that. Where do the Royal Navy ships fall into this? Well, they fall a little bit closer to the American side than they do to the Japanese side. They are very capable gunships, but they do have better torpedo systems than American destroyers. They play a little bit differently just because uh, you're trading the kind of utility that you get when you're playing the Royal Navy versus the United States Navy destroyers. Once you do decide to go down the Royal Navy line, you're going to want to look at who's going to help you down this line. Now you're really going to have about three choices. The first is obviously the man with the hat himself, John Jellicoe. He is the base commander for the Royal Navy. And if you choose all of the abilities in the left column, you will essentially have a destroyer captain who has a fairly worthless base trait. That said, you can be effective playing in Royal Navy destroyers with John Jellico, and I did that for the first couple of tiers. The next commander we'll talk about is Philip Vine. Philip has a pretty interesting base trait. It is a very useful inspiration for pretty much anybody because it basically just helps you uh, get hit less because it increases incoming fire dispersion by a small percentage. Now, every little bit helps, so even if you're in a battleship, maybe that means those well-aimed shots become less well-aimed, and if you're in a destroyer, you're a pretty small target, so maybe those miss you entirely. Now, Philip does have probably the best ability that you can get right out of the gate, which is Quick Fix, which allows you to continue to steer and continue to use your engine even after they've been shot to pieces. Now, currently the legendary ability that you see at the bottom that I also have selected here is called Unstoppable. And Unstoppable right now is allowing essentially the same thing, even at rank one. So it becomes a little bit redundant, but I have a feeling that it's not supposed to do that based on the description of it. It looks like you're supposed to be all the way leveled up before that actually happens. If that is a bug and it does get fixed, that's something to think about. But I would describe Philip as being the person who is probably a little bit more capable in terms of a destroyer commander if you're really looking to go out there and get into a lot of, a lot of knife fights. Because you have a lot of abilities in his line that increase dispersion, including his base trait, that increase the effectiveness of your main battery and not quite as many that emphasize stealth or the specific use of torpedoes. Last and certainly not least is Reginald Turwit. He has the base trait True Grit, which improves the chances that your steering gears will not become impaired and also very slightly lowers the torpedo reload time. I really like this base trait. Um, it's not necessarily the primary use of the Royal Navy destroyers, but it certainly helps and both of those things are good for destroyers. Honestly, uh, as an inspiration, both of these things are not that bad for any ship that has torpedoes. Turret does have more abilities on this that allow you to buff your torpedoes. As you see how I've got this laid out right now, um, essentially I have my commander set up so that he is really good at torpedoes. Uh, which 
even though I consider these to be gunboats, actually really complements the Royal Navy really well. Both of the commanders, Reginald Turwitt and Vine, are, are really good choices all the way down to the point where you get to their legendaries, uh, and that's where things start to not make a lot of sense. Uh, in both cases, at least in the game as it exists right now, you're going to want to use Unstoppable uh, because it's the only thing that makes any sense. And, I mean, if it's bugged right now, you might as well take advantage of it. So let's finally get into the actual ships. Obviously, we're here to talk about ships, so here we go. Tier 2, HMS Valkyrie. So the Valkyrie is a World War I era ship. She was a V-Class destroyer. As a flotilla leader, she was larger, actually, than other destroyers over time. A flotilla leader is kind of a large destroyer or a small cruiser. They were intended to kind of command a group of destroyers. Not unlike the reason why the Atlanta was born, but the Valkyrie is that same idea about three and a half decades earlier. In terms of gameplay, the Valkyrie's pretty standard. Uh, you're not going to be doing a lot of stealth torpedoing in this, though it is technically possible. Uh, you will notice probably quickly after you start playing this that the Royal Navy has different firing settings for its torpedoes than other nations. And this is actually one of the gimmicks that makes the Royal Navy a super interesting line to play. So rather than having a wide spread and a narrow spread, the Royal Navy has single shot or narrow spread. Uh, for the most part, I like to shoot on single shot because you can create this line of death through the water. And it also allows you to better control, you know, if you need exactly two or three torpedoes to take this person out and you need one or two to take that guy out, it creates some interesting situations where you can actually kind of split up your individual launchers and get a lot more mileage in clutch situations. None of this really applies heavily to the Valkyrie because you're probably not going to get to do that at this level, but you'll see it as we go through. The other thing you're going to notice is that you have a lot of smoke screens. Now, the British smoke screens work a little bit differently than other nations. They are short duration, but they have a short recharge. And I personally love these because it gives you the option usually to use them as kind of a panic button. You've made a mistake, you take a quick turn, you hit the smoke, and you can usually get away. The downside, if, if you want to call it that, is that you can't loiter in your smoke screen for minutes at a time shooting people with HE. This is going to keep you aggressive and on the offense, mostly always moving. It's really fun gameplay mechanic, at least from my perspective. In terms of what you're going to want to take, you don't have any equipment choices. I would probably say start out with the hull upgrade. You're going to get an additional 900 hit points out of it. After that, probably either torpedo or gun range. The torpedoes aren't going to make a whole lot of difference. The upgraded torpedoes just move two kilometers faster. The gun range obviously gives you 10% greater gun range. For my money, these are about equal choices. So have fun. At tier 3 we have HMS Wakeful. The Wakeful was a W-class destroyer also built during World War I. Unlike the Valkyrie, she was not broken up before the start of hostilities during World War II, but didn't last too long in the conflict. HMS Wakeful participated in the British retreat from continental Europe at Dunkirk, where she was sunk by German Schnellboats, which was sort of the same idea as an American PT boat, only a fair bit larger. When you're playing the Wakeful, just be aware that you are probably, tier for tier, the second best destroyer out there, at least in terms of guns. The Clemson, fully upgraded, is going to shoot you up pretty bad, but if you run into any German or any Japanese destroyers, you should be able to outgun them. The Wakeful is the first ship that you're going to have the opportunity to choose some equipment. I would personally go with Aiming Systems Mod 1. You're going to hear a lot of that during this review. After that, the hull upgrade is still probably your best bet for your first upgrade. You're going to pick up about 1600 hit points. After that, go for the torpedoes because you are going to get an extra 2000 damage per torpedo 
it is going to increase your reload time, but the torpedoes also pick up about six knots, which is really pretty nice. That obviously leaves the guns for last. Do pick them, they don't hurt anything. Moving on. At tier four, we have HMS Acasta. The Acasta was one of 20 A-class destroyers built in the interwar period. The Acasta herself saw service enforcing the arms embargo off the coast of Spain during the Spanish Civil War, and then during World War II, during which she was sunk by the sister ships Scharnhorst and Gneisenau. In total, exactly half, 10 of the 20 A-class destroyers, were lost during the war. As you play this ship, you will feel like you are being punished. And I consider this to be kind of the worst ship that's in this line. At this point, you are starting to get pretty significantly outgunned by the American destroyers. The only thing that you can say is at least you're not being shot to pieces by the two-gun Mitsuki, but you don't have a lot of really good torpedo options. Your torpedoes are still, in terms of range, pretty close to what your sea detectability is. So you're gonna have to play corners pretty smart in order to play this boat effectively, or use your global experience to get through this as fast as possible, because it is a little bit of a chore. Once again, when we're looking at equipment, you are going to want to choose Aiming Systems Mod 1. The first thing you'll want to upgrade are the torpedoes. That is going to get you an extra 3,700 damage per torpedo. It is going to increase your reload speed, and it's going to do nothing in terms of range. But that extra 3,700 is a pretty big bump. The hull upgrade is going to get you 1,700 hit points. I would probably choose that second. And then finish off with the gun upgrade. The Acasta, in spite of being kind of in the middle of a line that has a lot of very shooty ships, is not real good at getting into knife fights. You are going to get outgunned. You only have the four guns, and they're not real impressive. At Tier 5, we have HMS Icarus. Strangely, an I-Class destroyer. The Icarus was built in 1930. There were a total of 13 I-Class destroyers, with one, more than half, surviving the war. The Icarus herself was part of HMS Hood's escort. But due to bad weather, the destroyer group that was to accompany the battlecruiser were left behind. Which is something that's kind of unfortunate and not really modeled in World of Warships. Because, because a battleship or cruiser may be slower during a flat calm. But in choppy seas, the battleship doesn't get slowed down very much. The cruiser gets slowed down a little bit more. The destroyer has to go over every one of those waves and it gets tossed about pretty bad and will make slower speed, in many cases, than battleships. Obviously, the Icarus couldn't save the hood, but by the end of World War II, it did sink four German submarines. When you're playing the Icarus, you're going to have this sort of epiphany. You now have the ability to use hydroacoustic search. Your raison d'etre has emerged in the Icarus, and at this point, you can hunt out torpedoes, and in fact, use this hydroacoustic search to hunt down other destroyers hiding behind smoke, hiding behind islands. Uh, this is really where the Royal Navy destroyers start to come into their own with the Icarus. Now, if you're considering taking on American destroyers, do understand they still do outgun you, but you can use your quick use, short duration smoke screens to gain an advantage. You can use the hydroacoustic search to ferret them out of their own smoke screens or to continue to shoot at them while within your own. Now they will have to be relatively close, usually three and a half kilometers or closer, but that's greater than your sea detectability range even while firing in a smoke screen. When you are looking to upgrade this ship, first choose Aiming System Mod 1. After that, either Propulsion Mod 2 or Steering Mod 2 should be a good choice. I would personally recommend staying away from Damage Control System Mod 2 just because in a destroyer, by the time you have to worry about any of these things, your day's probably ruined already. As you're leveling up, I would go straight to the torpedoes. Now, I will say, when you get this ship, you're probably not going to love it, because it doesn't feel that good. And most of that has to do with how the torpedoes work. 
And how the torpedoes are labeled here is very deceptive because it's telling you essentially you're trading 300 damage and an extra 18 seconds on the reload for essentially an increase in torpedo speed of two knots. What it's not telling you is that those torpedoes that go an extra two knots per hour also go an additional two kilometers. And that's gonna give you a nice buffer to start stealth firing these torpedoes so that you can function as both a pretty good torpedo boat and a pretty good gunboat. After that, pick up the hull probably, though the gun range isn't a bad choice either. You're gonna wanna pick them both up, but the hull's gonna give you an extra 2100 hit points, which is about 21%. Actually, it's exactly 21%. Anywho, Tier 6, HMS Jervis. This was a J-Class destroyer, imagine that. The J-Class consisted of eight ships, these two were considered flotilla leaders. The Jervis served throughout World War II and was considered a very lucky ship, suffering no losses to enemy combat during the entire war. This is a tradition I'm sure I have not kept up while playing the Jervis. That said, the Jervis didn't just sit in the back. She was actually attacked several times and she had the bow of the ship completely blown off by a guided bomb but none of her crew were significantly injured in the attack. When you're playing the Jervis, the Jervis is gonna feel pretty great from start to finish. I would consider for equipment, get your aiming mod one, then either propulsion or steering again, and this is the first time that you're able to pick up concealment, so make sure that you have enough credits to play the Jervis when you get into this. The concealment mod is going to help you quite a bit. There is no reason to consider anything other than concealment that is in equipment slot three. Strangely enough, after that, I would pick up the hull first. Um, the hull is gonna give you an additional 2,500 hit points. After that, you can actually go straight into gun range, though the torpedoes are pretty equal in terms of their usability. You don't pick up a whole lot with the torpedo upgrade here. Uh, you do pick up about 900 damage that said, I prefer the, the gun range. You are starting to get into the mode of being a real dedicated gunboat again, and you have a 360 degree rotating rear turret, which just feels amazing. Uh, and it gives you a lot of versatility to kind of wiggle back and forth and to shoot up other destroyers without having to worry about taking a lot of your guns out of the game. Then finally, we come to HMS Lightning. The crowning achievement in the line, the Lightning was one of 16 ships in her class. The L class, if you haven't caught on at this point, these ships that are in these different classes pretty much all start with the letter of their class. So L class, Lightning, W class, Wakefield, etc. Similar to the Valkyrie, the Lightning was swarmed by German E-boats, the Schnell boats, or German torpedo boats that I mentioned earlier. After being struck by multiple torpedoes, she was abandoned and eventually sank. When you're playing HMS Lightning, what do you want to get? First get Aiming System Mod 1, then get either Propulsion Mod 2 or Steering. Obviously you want the Concealment, and I personally choose Main Battery Mod 3, but I could also see an argument for any one of the Equipment Slot 4 choices. First thing you're going to want to upgrade is probably again the torpedoes. It does reduce the amount of damage that the torpedoes do by about 300 damage. However, you do pick up an additional one knot on the torpedo speed. You pick up an extra two kilometers on the torpedo range. So now you're torpedoing out to 10 kilometers. That's a pretty respectable distance and considerably greater than even your base detectability. After that, I would go with the hull. You're gonna pick up 2,900 hit points and finish off with gun range. Now that you've done all of this stuff, was it worth the effort? Absolutely, absolutely. The Lightning is probably the best tier seven destroyer in the game, World of Warships Legends, right now. It has the versatility to both take on people with its torpedoes, and it also can hang in there reasonably well in a gunfight. You do set a lot of fires in this thing, you do have a lot of smoke, you have hydro. The one thing that you're probably gonna feel a little bit lacking at is mobility. Now, this does have probably the highest 
base speed of any tier 7 destroyer right now. That said, it's not by much, and the lack of a speed boost means in clutch situations where you really need to make it across the map in a hurry, you don't have that extra tool in your pocket. So, is it a downside? Yes. Does it make the Lightning a bad ship? By no means. The Lightning has 360 degree turrets on all of its turrets. It is just a joy to play, and I don't think I could recommend it highly enough for anyone interested in playing Destroyers. So that has been my review of the Royal Navy Destroyers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit on the long side, but it's about as quickly as I could cover six ships. Please leave me some comments if you like this format or if you think I can do something better, and I'll see you guys on the next one.